Ray thought it strange to characterize depression as a condition of the mind when it houses itself so noisily inside the body. Somatic aches that rendered waking life painful and sleep impossible, head throbbing until the stomach roiled, a tightness in the chest that clenched its way up the esophagus, forming a knot at the base of the throat, the feeling of weeping. Paired with traumatic memories, depression felt more like a consumptive physical disorder than anything like a mental state. In the past, Ray had dreamed often of escaping all of it by suicide. Straight razors, pills, a belt around his neck or a tailpipe in his mouth. Indeed, Ray's sleeping mind used to grace him with absurdly romantic visions of self-destruction. Of course, this was all before Ray welcomed havoc into his life. Tries on this shit. Pot smoke whirled in the glow of Howard's lava lamp. Ray squinted at the screen of his roommate's laptop. The link Howard had just clicked was a nonsense jumble of seemingly randomized characters. Okay, so it's a video. Congratulations, Howard, you've discovered YouTube. Nah, it's not a video, my man. It's a live feed. The setting of the feed was a hazy gray landscape. Snarls of something like barbed wire etched against the heatless sky. A vast stretch of sand stirred into subtle movement by gusts of wind. Clusters of what appeared to be weird, perennial plants occupied the frame's right foreground, their leaves blacker than black. On the distant horizon, a shape convulsed with urgent motion. It was as dark as the trees, but difficult to make out. It moved on two bundles of loose and spinning limbs, which looked from afar, like arachnoid tentacles. Ray leaned toward the screen. Whoa. The creature on screen was gradually but unmistakably drawing closer. What is it? Nobody knows. There are whole forums dedicated to this thing. YouTube channels. I've even heard of an annual convention somewhere in the Midwest. But none of them, not one of them knows who's broadcasting it, from where, or how. I mean, the link shouldn't even work for Christ's sake, but here we are. Most people think it's some crazy art project, but some people think it's actually like a future world or the past. This one Satanist dude on YouTube says it's like the world now as it really is, but we just lack the ability to perceive it. Yeah, but what is that? He pointed to the distant, many-limbed thing, noting to himself that it was less distant now than it had been moments before. Oh, that. The first guy who saw it was Czech, and he called it Povok, which means spider, but the podcast he was on sounded like shit, so everyone heard Pavic, or Havoc. Havoc stuck. Some people think there's a lot of different Pavics rolling around in there, but I've never seen more than one at a time. The room's dim lighting and heavy smoke irritated Ray's eyes. He blinked. Damn. God damn. <laughs> Trippy, right? I'll send you the link. A buddy of mine showed me this for the first time I dropped acid, and I thought I was in it, man, like in the screen. It looks real as fuck when you're stoned. With the fresh hit, Ray's vision somehow extended the vista on screen into something panoramic, then three-dimensional. The room faded into the background. His fear was still there, but it became exhilarating. Here, where it was dangerous, Ray felt safe. Alone the next day, Ray called up the link Howard had showed him. He was spacey from too much weed the night before, and his mouth was filled with a persistent taste of salt. Ray sat for hours watching the feed, but the provoke was nowhere to be found. It was later in the day, 
as Ray joylessly chewed his way through a takeout pizza, that he finally saw movement, something dark flickering in the background, hovering above the sandy terrain. It moved quickly, but Ray glimpsed floppy limbs fluttering from its underside with a tarantula-like head. A text message from Howie jarred him out of his momentary fugue. I'm gonna be out late. Can you feed Stewie? Ray replied, barely paying attention. No problem. He crossed the hallway to the kitchen and filled the dog's bowl without bothering to turn on the light. As the kibble hit the bowl, the terrier galloped forward eagerly, and Ray couldn't help flashing back to the flicker of weirdness he'd just seen on screen. In the dark, Stuart's dewy brown eyes appeared almost insectile. Dangling from his open mouth, his tongue looked like some alien life form. Ray didn't tell the dog he was a good boy, didn't scratch its head. Instead, he bolted back to his room and closed the door. Ray was sprawled on his bed, his laptop perched on his bare stomach. He'd been link hopping for hours and was about to turn off the computer in favor of sleep when he landed on a subreddit devoted to the Havoc feed. Havoc in different languages. Okay. The thread's first post was by user Povoke Havoc is Life. Okay, so right now we're stuck with two different names for the thing or things we're seeing in there. Pavok or Havoc. I've been reading a lot of other threads and I realized there are more universal words out there. All over the internet, I've seen people describe Havoc as a demon, which is basically the same word in a whole bunch of other European languages. I'm not a Christian or whatever, but can we all agree to say demon instead of pavok or havoc? It just makes more sense. One more thing. People outside Reddit are using the word cosmos to describe the world inside the feed. This also translates across languages, more or less. So maybe we can just call havoc the demon in the cosmos? What do you all think? A headache brewed behind Ray's eyeballs. He pushed his palms against his temples and brought his cursor back to the search bar. For maybe the tenth time that night, he returned to the Havoc feed wiki and scrolled. Some viewers claim they have become fully immersed in the feed and even visited the world inside. Sure, why not? The link brought Ray to a blog whose layout shrieked early 2000s. Lores torch gifts flickered on either side of the webpage heading. Diaries from the Void? Oh boy. Ray scrolled down to view the blog entry, red font on a black background, and the pain in his skull immediately seemed to magnify. He winced and began to read. I am going to explain all of this as simply as possible. Read closely. It started with watching. A lot of watching. So much watching that my wife left me. But I wasn't going to let that stop me. This is a good start. I couldn't explain my need to watch, so I stopped trying. I cut contact with all friends and family members after my wife left. Friends, family, those used to make me feel safe. I had all my groceries delivered and started living off protein supplements to minimize time spent away from the screen. I ate while I watched the screen. I shat while I watched the screen. Once I watched for 57 hours straight and passed out. I left the feed playing while I slept. I hoped that I might learn something from the sounds, even if I wasn't watching the images. I I didn't know what I hoped to learn, but I knew it was important. After maybe a month of living this way, I entered the screen. I've heard of others coming close, close but no cigar, but I got more than close. And by the time you read this, I won't be the only one. I don't know if everyone will make it back out. I was inside for maybe an hour or two weeks. I can't give you an exact number because time is different in there. I can't describe everything I saw, but I know that this place is underneath everything we see. Underneath everything. Even if we pretend like it's not. How, how can I write this? Language doesn't seem like enough. I lost myself in there. Imagine a big black zero, 
on a never-ending white screen, I saw an endless scroll of stars dying. Gone. 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 Life. Death. Life. Death. 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 Then I saw the havoc rushing toward me. You don't know what it's like to be scared. So you make up Dracula or Freddy Krueger or Satan. You put a cartoon face over it. You don't know what it's like to be scared. But I do. Fear isn't even the right word. It was more like something blank, like zero, like no God, no place. Everything was blurry. Then I was back. I saw real death in there. You do not want to see it too. Please do not watch the Havoc feed. Ray snapped the laptop shut and placed it on the pillow beside his head. Sleep was a long time coming. So, how is your weight gone? Ray's virtual therapist, Mira, always started sessions the same way. Good. Mira watched Ray shift in his chair and rub his fingertips against two weeks of beard. Yeah, well, that's good to hear. Where would you like to take today's session? Ray's relationship to therapy had never been goal-oriented so much as it had been an effort to stave off the demons clawing their way down his brainstem. As the world continued hurtling its way from catastrophe to catastrophe, he just wanted to keep the boot of despair off his throat. He averted his eyes. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, how has the marijuana use been? I'm still working on it, um, but it has, it's been a bit better. Uh, every other day instead of every day. And what about porn? Ray had masturbated again this morning, maybe an hour before the session. Could be better. That's okay, Ray. Is that something you'd like to talk about? Would that be a good choice for today's session? Sure. Um, hey, have you heard of the Havoc feed? I don't think so. What is that? It's this thing on the internet. Uh, been on my mind. Okay, well, shall we look at this thought pattern model again? Sometimes we get caught in a cognitive pattern in which our thoughts cause us to feel certain emotions. And then we act on those emotions. B-E-T. Behavior, emotions, thoughts. Which of these three is easiest for us to change? Ray squinted. I think you know the answer. Later that day, in the early evening, Ray was back in his room. Howard was staying at his girlfriend's place for a few more days and Ray had fed Stewart an hour ago. Now it was just him, his computer, and his behavior giving into the wrong thoughts and emotions. The website was up. The on-screen image was static, windless. The now familiar alien vegetation clustered the frame, unmoving. A speck drifted through the air in the far distance. Maybe something sentient, but just as likely a clot of dirt. Ray was beginning to zone out when his brain took another reeling blow, a thought emotion two punch. Weed would feel nice right now. Ray behaved accordingly, unearthing a pre rolled joint from his desk drawer and blazing up. Come back, you son of a bitch, I saw you. The adrenaline got him thinking, and the thinking got him feeling. The next thing he knew, he had opened another tab and was watching porn. It wasn't until he was nearly finished that he realized he had left the live feed rolling. Beneath the performer's exaggerated moans, there was a bizarre chittering. Ray was going faster, harder, when something revealed itself, coiling at the laptop's corners, barely visible. His eyes were focused on the bodies on screen, establishing shot, cutting into close-ups at just the right moment. But in his periphery, he caught enough detail to perceive something material, the emergence of a presence into the room. Ray's mouth opened, but he didn't make a sound. After a late dinner, Ray popped his evening dose of a salad to pram and slipped into bed, 
doom scrolling on his phone until he finally resolved to try sleeping. He seemed to jolt between states of consciousness before he saw it. It. Ray was flat on his back, surveying the overhead light. The bulb was off, but the dome-shaped fixture darkened visibly from the inside before swelling and expanding. There was a desperate scrabbling, like the sound of cat's claws on a bedroom door. The fixture sagged from pressure, then detached and clattered on the floor. The thing that had been hiding inside fell gracelessly at Ray's feet, landing with a thump. An appendage twitched over the blanket, skirting Ray's toes. Stiff with distress, he raised his head to get a better look, and despite the gloom, he saw the thing. A body like a slimy black watermelon, lined with rows of limbs resembling jointed tentacles, its face all squirming mandibles and milky gray eyes. Havoc had arrived, and Ray had invited it in. Ray's shock-stricken body refused to obey his panicked brain, even as the thing retreated in jerky movements to make its way under the covers. Its moist body was against his shins, its greasy legs slithering against his flesh. Ray felt a sudden pricking sensation, and he was flooded with warmth. His room went soft and indistinct to the edges before oozing into total abstraction, and the soft sensation of his bed disintegrated with it. For a moment, he was nothing. No place, vision detached from body in absolute spacelessness. Some ancient and unwanted knowledge pushed into his brain. This is all that's real. And then Ray was falling, and there was sensation again. Heat and dry atmosphere whooshing across his unprotected skin. He could hardly muster the strength to stir, but he managed to tilt up enough to see Havoc still affixed to his leg, pointed mandibles buried in the meat of his calf. Eventually, he landed, the impact forcing an explosion of breath from his lungs. He arched his spine away from the ground, moaning. Havoc's mandibles withdrew with a squelch. Iker dribbled from the wound, threading with blood and puddling into the sand. Ray's prostrate body still refused to obey his brain's commands as Havoc clambered behind him, limbs moving like a flurry of cleaning brushes. It clutched Ray's hair inside its disgusting mouth and pulled, dragging him fast. Ray's back glided painfully against the ground, his eyes staring up at the sunless expanse of beige sky. In the high distance, more shapes moved in strange patterns, and he knew that Havoc was not alone. There were more of them, more Pavics searching like vultures for the reckless and the damned. In his peripheries, he saw coils of material that he had mistaken for barbed wire when he first observed them on his screen. Now he was certain that no human hand had any part in the creation of this place. He was in the live feed, Havoc yanking him further and further away. In the spot where he landed, Ray could see a laptop propped on the sand like a ridiculous movie prop. On screen, Howard's familiar face leaned in for a closer look. Set your eyes on this shit. Then Havoc was burrowing, dragging Ray below the earth, inch by inch down into the blackness. When he was fully under, the last of his toes dragged from the feelingness of this new world. Ray tried to look down but found he had no means of doing so and the feeling of feeling blipped out with terrible swiftness. He was nothing, incorporeal. Consciousness locked inside a void, forced to perceive the unending emptiness with no recourse to action or speech. He knew now that this is what he'd been seeking in the Pavok live feed, the essence of horror, unglued from the laughable masks of metaphor and allegory. He'd sought it, and now he'd found it. And Ray was never coming back. Havoc was written by Mike Thorne, adapted for audio by Brennan Storr. Starring Mike Thorne as Ray, Aidan Germain as Howard, Kiki Olsen Kiza as Havoc is Life, James Kennedy as Diaries from the Void, Ren Limo as Myra, and Brennan Storr as narrator. Music and titles by Hexagram. Sound design and editing by Brennan Store. Copyright 2022 Ghost Story Guys Productions. 16, 34, 17, 47. 
Mercy, camp, beam. Mercy, camp, beam.